for the defense. Monica Guerrero for Mr. Boy. For Mr. King. <laughs> Mr. <Right>. King. <laughs> you read your name. Sorry. Okay. That's okay. I think this is is this family violence? Okay. Judge, I believe it's ours. Okay. Okay. All right. Monica Guerrero for Mr. Herbert King. We're ready, Your Honor. Jason Garahan for the state, Your Honor. Are you Mr. King? Yes, ma'am. All right. You entered a plea. On uh, January 10th of no contest, you applied for deferred adjudication. The state was waiving paragraph, the enhancement paragraph without objection. According to the plea bargain agreement, punishment is to be assessed at five years in the prison. The state is silent on your application. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. All right, off the record for one moment, please. Uh, Ms. Flores? Yes, good morning, Judge. Good morning. If you could give us maybe uh, 10 minutes because I'm in a hearing, but then I'll take your matter up right after this. Okay, the- not a problem. All right, and you have the violation report for Lucio Roa? Yes, correct. All right, so that's what I'll be talking to you about. Okay, sounds so great. I'll place you in the waiting room and then bring you back. Okay, thank you. All right, have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report? State? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. Any objections? State? Not from the state, Your Honor. Defense? No, Your Honor. All right. The state is uh, silent. Uh, defense, any witnesses? No, Judge. I just have Mr. King. All right. The court will hear argument. On behalf of my client, Judge, if you notice from the PSI, PSI, it's been a long time since he's had any type of problem. And um, he hasn't had drug issues in several years. He's been gainfully employed at gyms and he's dressed to go back to work as soon as this case is done because he really feels that he could be a productive member of society. He is looking forward to trying to get his CDL license. He says you can drug test him, nail bed test him, hair follicle test him. He has been clean for several years. And this night he was going to his girlfriend's house and he didn't know that she had a new boyfriend. So I'm asking the court to consider putting him on probation or deferred adjudication. The deferred would give him a giant hammer over his head of 20 years if he violated any of the conditions. Um, If he gets the probation, he says he can complete every term satisfactorily, and he's happy to go to any of the recommendations at the top evaluation. All right, so this is the court's issue. And Mr. King, I'm strongly thinking of sending you to prison. I've read the PSI report and I read the um, stipulations. And somebody needs to explain to me why I, I shouldn't send you to prison because from what I read in the stipulations, she's saying that she's your ex fiance, that you were calling her, as she says, blowing up her phone, calling her, asking her where she was. And then she says that he was looking for her to find this boyfriend that he was dating. I mean, that she was dating. And then she left her apartment door open and he went into the apartment door. And then he beats up the boyfriend who he said he was dozing off on the couch or something. So that's what I have before me. And it's been stipulated too. So... Council, now you're saying it's it's something different, but that's not what's in the steps. Mr. King would like to address the court. All right, can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth so help you God? Yes, ma'am. All right, you can lower your hand, state your name for the record. Herbert King. All right, uh, any questions? Uh, he would like to just explain to you the, to answer your questions. Okay. Ms. Kiki Davis uh, says that I kept blowing up her phone. That's a lot. Miss Kiki is still contacting me or trying to contact me on a constant basis. Where I stay at, they know the whole situation. So they advise me to not be in contact with her. She literally came to my new job 
before and ask somebody to have me to step out and I wouldn't step out. So she's constantly bothering me, want money from me, want me to go take care of her dog that we bought, like telling me she's not with this guy and with the, the, the thing with the guy, he had been harassing me for months, picking on me. When I went to her house, all I did was go to pick up my car that she told me to come pick up. My sister couldn't be in court with me today. My sister is a witness to it. My sister told me not to go. And I was like, I'm just going to pick up the car. She's not going to do nothing wrong to me. And I just went to pick up my car that my money from work comes on. So how did this result in an well, altercation I'm, with this standing, guy? I was standing out talking to her at the car. And at the time I was talking to her at the car, he came out behind me. I had my back turned and he tried to stab me with a box cutter. And of course, I'm a man. I'm going to turn around and fight. I'm not going to let you just stab me. And it's funny to them now. He didn't call me on numerous occasions since I've been out on bond. I called the police. The police basically told me he can call me at any point he wants to, but I can't call him. Where's the proof that he called you? Miss Kiki Davis pops up in my house one day when I wasn't there. No, you're skipping over my question. My I, question I, is, where is- I had a phone with all my, my information in it that when I went to jail, I went and got it. I tried to give it to my previous lawyer. She kept blowing it off, blowing it off, blowing it off. She, oh, I can't get it now. The court has to ask for it. And one day when I was at work, Miss Kiki Davis came to my house, told him she was getting some property that belonged to her. My friend doesn't like problems at his house. He tries to give her the phone or whatever she was in there trying to get. And my phone and stuff came up missing. But I'm not bothering anybody. I well, never... no, where, see, here's the thing. The stipulations say something completely different than what you're telling me. The stipulations say that her boyfriend or fiance, whomever he may be, was inside the apartment and that you beat him up inside the apartment. You're saying that she's come to your job since. Where's the proof of that? Because the stipulations say something different. Then you're saying that he is calling you. Where is the proof of that? He's calling me. I, I, I called the police. I made police reports on it. And they took, They gave me a little paper. I don't know where the paper went. Oh, where, once a police report is made, it should be in yeah, the system. He, I, and the police basically told me he couldn't really file a report because... The, the thing was against me, not against him. So he can call me at any point that he wants to. All right. So counsel, uh, this is um, Mr. King's story. Um, right now, I'm leaning towards sending him to prison. But if there is something that's produced to the court that this complainant in this case has been calling him and and or well, I would say end because uh, his ex fiance, the fact that she's going to his job, if he wants to bring in information or somebody who knows of that, I will listen to that. But most importantly for the court, because this is really a case against her boyfriend, I want to know if the boyfriend has been contacting him as he says he has and some proof of that. Because otherwise, I'm leaning towards sending you to prison because this is a serious. Uh, case and based upon the stipulations and, and your attorney will tell you I always read the stipulations and I always read uh, the PSI report and I know in the PSI report nobody's been able to get in touch with the complainant but your client is saying that he's been calling him there should be some record of that okay uh, how much time can you give me so I would have to contact the police department and get a copy of the report and then see it. I don't know about any phone being probably it was a different phone probably. but if there's a more recent phone i can try to find messages or things like that and see if i can bring in somebody from his job to come in yeah. that's fine and state i know you're silent on this but i would really like to hear from this complainant yes judge all right so how much time are you asking for can i get one yes all right miss ferguson on mr king can we recall this for uh one month please uh, no, put it, um, can you put it on like maybe the 24th? Cause that's when um, I can hear it. Okay. So we're come back on April 24th. 
and I will remember this conversation, but so everybody else can remember it. I will write on the document sheet what I'm asking for. And what I'm asking for is um, your ex-fiance coming to your job. That's great. If you want to bring somebody in and say that she's coming to the job, that's something for me to consider. But what I really want is I want this information about the boyfriend who may or may not still be her boyfriend. I want information that he is actually been calling him and state if he can come in. Yes. Uh, he actually, she has problems with all men that she's with. He actually beat her up two weeks after I was out of jail. Oh, well, see, here's so, the thing. That's if you, yeah, that's what I'm saying is, if you want to bring a police report on that too, you're more than welcome <laughs> to bring a police report on that. I will, I will see what I can get you. All right. But I just want everyone to know what I want. Yes. Ma okay. All right, Ms. Ferguson, we'll give you a reset form and it will be at, uh, let's set it for at 11. Okay. Judge, on this case, I did not have, have an investigator appointed. Can I get an investigator for a short amount of time to find those records for me? Yes. Okay. And uh, counsel, if you, because I know you haven't filed a motion yet, if you just get the investigator and then you can bring the uh, motion in and the court will sign it. That way it can start immediately. I, I, I'd like to do that. All right. And do you need a cop? Do you have a copy of the police report or do you need it for the complainant's information? I have a, the discovery, so, okay. but I don't know how contemporaneous that would be in terms of getting her phone number because he says it's changed. Okay. But let me see what I can bring in to show further proof of what he's telling me. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I thought you were warned that. Oh, okay. No, I'm not going to remove um, the GPS tracking. So you're going to be allowed still to go to work, but I'll give you one day out of the week where you can have some extra time that's maybe outside of work hours for you to uh, go to certain places, but there'll still be a no contact order in place with the ex and the complainant. That's fine. That's fine. So what you need to tell me what day of the week? Sunday. That way I'll be going to church. All right, uh, state, uh, Mr. Gerhan. Sorry. So he's still going to be on partial he, uh, for work, but I'm going to give him an extra time on Sunday. So what type of curfew do you all want on Sunday? Church apparently lasts a while. So which church is it? Is it Baptist Church? It's not. All right, so that I know. <laughs> so if we can have it, it does it, it does if we can well have, do you know i do because you belong. you go you belong to the baptist church i do not i'm catholic but yeah i've, I've gone to different, <laughs> different events and funerals etc well as long it as it's it. now is it the pastor's anniversary that's till eight at night <laughs> so, but, but sean you know right <laughs> <laughs> but nobody is allowed to leave for the games on Sunday because, yeah. So how much time are you asking for on Sunday? Uh, just because uh, I work Sunday night. So I'm just trying to get out Sunday morning just to be able to go to church. Well, I mean, you, you got to give me some time. So like, when does service begin? Are you going to Sunday school? Uh, okay. So I so, always get a whooping when I go to Sunday school. All right. So <laughs> uh, from about, about 8 to 12. 8 a.m. to 12 p.m.? Yes, All right. So are you going to be at... Do you need to be someplace at 8 a.m.? No. This church. All right. So then, since you're saying 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., I'll give you 7.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. on Sundays. And counsel, if you could uh, go in the back and have them print me a B page, I'll write that down. State, are you okay with that? Yes, yes, you are. Okay. All right. Court is calling 2022 CR 9434, State of Texas versus Herbert Lee King. Can our parties announce for the record for the state? Jason Garrett, your honor. For the defense? Monica Guerrero for Mr. Boy. For Mr. King. <laughs> Mr. <Right>. King. <laughs> you read your name. Sorry. Okay. That's okay. All right. I need everyone to whisper. And to all the attorneys, when we're on the record, if you could please not approach.
the coordinator approach up here while we're on the record because it makes it more difficult for the court reporter to hear and it's distracting. All right, you're Mr. King? Yes, ma'am. All right, we're here today for sentencing. According to the plea bargain agreement, punishment was to be assessed at five years and the state is, was silent on your application. And we've come back here several times. And the reason why we came back is because uh, your client said that the complainant and the complainant's boyfriend um, were in contact with him on more than one occasion. Uh, and I asked for documentation of that so the court can make a decision on whether or not the court would grant his application. Uh, defense, do you have any evidence for the court? I handed the clerk some a police report as well as an email from a witness. I did receive another email this morning, but I did not have a chance to print that out uh, from a witness named Ancela Thomas, who says she is a witness to Donald Clark harassing Herbert on the phone and through messages. All right. State, do you have any objection to the court reviewing uh, a statement from William McClure in a police report um, with the incident report of uh, SAPD 2212-2612? No objection. All right. Uh, let me review those documents. I will tell you, I appreciate William McClure's letter. And I um, do realize it's here saying, but the state had no objection to it. But um, just based upon reading this, it appears that uh, Mr. McClure is being truthful in his rendition of what happened, because otherwise he could have said, I've seen this car every time that we've been at work. So um, I reviewed that and I will now review the police report. I would tell you the, the relationship addendum is. Yes, that's all they would give us. All right. Anything else you uh, wish to present to the court on behalf of your client? Uh, uh, you can raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yes. All right. You can lower your hand, state your name for the record. And Herbert I think King. that's, is that your left hand you were holding up? Oh, yeah. All right. Do you solemnly swear firm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yes, ma'am. All right. You can lower your hand, state your name for the record. Herbert King. All right. Uh, you have questions? Well, first, let me just say, Judge, Mr. King has been gainfully employed. He's been doing everything he's supposed to do. He hasn't been in trouble and he's been drug free for a long time. He wants to ask you, in his words, why he thinks he should get probation or deferred in this case. I'm asking for deferred only because if he messes up, that is a huge hammer for the court to have over his head in the future. Um, but Mr. King would like to ask you for probation and his wife is also president of the court. That is not any of the witnesses or complainants in this case. If you'd like to hear from her, how he has changed. All right. <laughs> so, um, You're gonna have to speak up. I'm sorry. Uh, I've really been trying to make a change in my life since that. That was a, um, a nice judgment as far as I thought somebody cared about me. They didn't. They were playing games with me. They were playing games with everybody else. Uh, I've moved on. I just recently got married on my 18th. Um, I have a son that suffers from MS. I have a son. Everyone, so, please whisper. And I'm going to need you to keep your voice up yes, because the court reporter needs to hear and I need to hear. Okay. I have a son that has autism. I've been trying to do what I need to do to show them that the right things in life and how to, even if you make mistakes, how to move forward. Um, I'm just trying to get another chance. I know probably you probably feel and other people probably feel I don't deserve that. I'm actually trying to get probation and I'm trying to relocate to where my wife and her family is. And where is that? My lawyer told me don't do it, but it's in uh, Gonzales County. All right, well, <laughs> you may not want to do that. No, I, I really do. Okay. I really do. I, I'm, I'm part owner of a, a business, and I'm just going to do what I need to do. And that's Gonzales, Texas? It is. I, I'm in Seguin. 
I'm actually guess his name, but Gonzalez County. No, so uh, is Guadalupe County. Guadalupe County, I'm sorry. So are you going to be in, would you be in Guadalupe or Gonzalez? Guadalupe, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm getting used to the counties outside of San Antonio. Okay. It, it's Seguin, Judge. It's, it's Guadalupe County. Gonzalez seemed like a surprise to me this morning. I would have even said harder, don't go there. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, um, but yeah. he's willing to give a hair follicle or any type of drug test to show you that he's been drug free. He doesn't drink. He's been sober. And he would really like an opportunity. All right. State, do you have any questions? There you go. What do you do for a living? I do uh, custom apparel, okay. uh, make business toys. I was working at gyms up until this last about week. It was some stuff going on up there that I felt would get me in trouble. So my wife had me to walk away because uh, I just had bought a car. And somebody found out my past and started cutting my car up, scratching it up. And they were telling me, hey, no cameras. We didn't see anything, so it was no problem. Just one moment. Uh, and State, if you have no argument, you can con confer. Thank you. All right, I know it's a busy day. Yes. Yeah, so uh, my wife had me to walk away, and I became part owner of the company that she owns. All right. Uh, so, uh, Mr. King, I'm going to give you a choice. Sometimes I can't give people choices, but I'm going to give you a choice. You know you better than I know you, yes. better than your attorney knows you. Yes. Um, Deputy Laura always tells me she doesn't know why people do probation out of this court because probation here is hard. So you have a choice. I can give you eight years deferred adjudication or I can give you two years in the prison. I think eight years. Okay. All right. This is what the court is going to do. You ready? I'm going to sentence you to eight years deferred adjudication. There's a $2,500 fine that will be probated. There's to be no contact with Donald Clark or Kiki K I K K I Davis. Proof of employment within 15 days. Yes, oh, you don't have to say yes after everything. It's breaking up the rhythm of the court reporter. Okay. <laughs> Proof of employment within 15 days. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. Please. Regular reporting by Zoom or in person. Anger management, regular UAs, field visits, one time per month until further notice, and probation, if you want to count that as reporting, you can. Uh, 200 hours of community service restitution. How old are your children? Eight and 19. Parenting classes. Once parenting classes are completed, then the community service hours will deem to be satisfied. Uh, transfer. Is there a transfer to Guadalupe County uh, probation or is that close enough where there's not a transfer? Um, I'll check. Um, I'll check on the sheet. All right. I'm going to put in here transfer to Guadalupe County, but there may not be a transfer to Guadalupe County. Uh, probation. Is there anything else he needs? Uh, no, Your Honor. Um, with him being in Guadalupe County, I do know that we can do virtual office visits with him. If that's if the court. Um, virtual virtual uh, office visits is fine. If you miss virtual, it's going to be in person and you're going to have to report in person. All right. Yes. All right. Anything else you need from the court in order to be successful? I'm sorry. All right. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants rights to appeal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you review that with your attorney? Yes, no. Did you understand it? I'm sorry. Let me keep these copies. Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. 
because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes. We can go off the record. So from here on out, every decision that you make, you need to ask yourself, is this something that could potentially result in me going to prison for 20 years? You understand? Yes. You're not to have any contact with the complainant or the complainant's current boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, whatever he is to her. If they contact you, then you need to call your probation officer and you probably need to call the police. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Just remain in the courtroom and probation will go over conditions with you. Yes, Thank you, Your Honor. May I be excused? You. Uh, you have one more case with us. I do? Yes. <laughs> and um, just one second. Okay. Uh, just a moment.